so let's start with artificial intelligence okay so it is very simple like right? so it is just going to mimic how the human intelligence works okay so if you want to make any decision okay normally what you do so first you will grab the input through your eyes or your ears or your nose or through your skin okay your body has lots of sensors right so your body have thousands and thousands of sensors with you okay so using that sensors you will grab the input from the external world okay so once you grab that input what your brain will do it will make the necessary decision using the neurons in the brain okay so in your brain you have lots and lots of neurons right billions of neurons are there so those neurons will take the decision whether uh, based on the you know environmental condition it will take the decision so say for example i have a you know uh, i have one hot object before me okay so i am going to touch it okay when i touch it immediately your skin as a sensor what it will do it will send the necessary signal to your brain okay what this brain will do is the brain will take the decision whether i have touched a hot object or a cold object okay so if i have touched the hot object immediately i will send the response to my hand to remove my hand okay to take off my hand so those kind of decisions are capable by your brain okay so same kind of decision i can make a robot to think okay i can give a robot that particular intelligence to think and make decision and listen one more thing here not only the decision which is which has been taken instantaneous okay based on the input from my sensor right so these decisions are not only instantaneous but also you can do predictive analysis also okay you know what is the difference between an instantaneous decision and predictive analysis okay instantaneous decision is the present tense so once you uh, you know uh, touch a particular uh, object immediately you are taking a decision right so that is instantaneous decision whereas predictive analysis is something like you have uh, the data from past 5 years say for example you have a company's data for past 5 years so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to make a predictive analysis okay in the next 5 years how my company company's production will be okay how my raw material supply will be something like something like that i want to predict okay the future so those kind of intelligence okay those kind of intelligence are coming under artificial intelligence so you have numerous amount of algorithms to do that please remember okay you have lots and lots of algorithms to do that so based on that so that algorithms can be written in uh, any programming language okay so it is not mandatory that it has to be c okay you can use python c++ java any programming language you can use okay and based on the uh, algorithm you can uh, put it in whatever the applications you need okay so you have a lot of application let's uh, discuss in the next slides okay and uh, this is artificial intelligence okay and uh, many people are having okay uh, some doubts in what is this artificial intelligence machine learning and deep learning so this picture will give you a clear idea about it so artificial intelligence is the domain this is the overall domain okay so this is the bigger circle the, which you can see in the picture now so this is the bigger circle okay the scope of artificial intelligence is little bit bigger okay so inside this artificial intelligence a small subset is your machine learning okay so the machine learning is something like a group of algorithms which can do statistical analysis can you get my point so the statistical analysis is like uh, the example which i told you before so you have a company with you and you have the data of uh, of your production your supply chain okay all your data are available with you and if you want to do any analysis on those data okay on this 5 years or 10 years data if you want to do some analysis and you have to come up with some predictions okay then these machine learning comes into picture this is the statistical or probability analysis on particular data okay that is what machine learning is all about okay and what is this deep learning is so deep learning is the another subset of machine learning okay so deep learning is also a part of machine learning but here the data which you use for analysis right so that data will be little bit bigger okay can you get my point because this data can be a text okay this data can be a number or this data can be a image also can you get my point so the data can be an image or even that data can be a video also okay so processing a text 
and processing an image is little bit different. Can you get my point? Because processing a text doesn't need you know uh, much of computation and much of uh, you know uh, the specifications of your computer. But whereas if you take a processing an image or processing a video, you need a good hardware or computation power. Can you get my point? So both the processing is the data processing will be a little bit different based on the data you choose. Okay. So if your data is very much higher resolution or very much higher in size or something like that, then we will go for deep learning. Okay. Then we will go for deep learning in order to what? In order to scrutinize, in order to reduce the complexity in the data, and then we will take it to the machine learning algorithm to process it. Okay, so this is the difference between artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning. Okay? So in order to explain this machine learning, okay, so I have one, uh, I have referred one one of the uh, video. Okay, the, this is the slide which I have, uh, got from that. So it will be very easy to understand. So listen to this very carefully. There is one girl. Okay, this uh, there is one girl, and she has been assigned with one homework. Okay, some assignment or something like that from her school. She has been assigned with some uh, task. Okay, here what uh, she is doing is uh, she has to classify between the red flower and the blue color flower. Okay, there you can see two flowers, right? One is the red color and other one is the blue color. Okay, what she has to do is she has to pluck each and every petal from that flower. Okay, and she has to measure. What is the length and what is the width and what is the color? Okay, so that is what her assignment is all about. Okay, so she slowly picks, uh, you know, she slowly plucks each and every petal and she will measure it with the scale, length, and the width, and she will uh, identify what is the color and she will put a small table there. Okay? So small table and she will be plotting each and every data there. Okay, so this, this is what she is doing. But accidentally, what happens is. She has plotted every petal's data there, but suddenly she lost something. Okay, she lost one of the petal. Okay, but she noted down the width and the length, but she forgot to note down the color of that particular petal. Okay, so now how to approach this? Okay, how to approach this particular problem? Okay, so as a common man, okay, as a individual, as a common man, without Type of this machine learning. If a person comes and if it, she, if she, he or she she sees this particular uh, uh, you know the problem, what uh, she will approach is something like so she will compare the previous data. Okay, so say for example in the previous data and all uh, the length and the width uh, of the red flower will be little bit higher. If you can see the previous data, so the length and width of the uh, previous petals na the red color petals will be little bit higher so you can see 3 1.5 uh, which is comparatively higher than 2 and 1 okay the blue color uh, petal okay so here the red petal is uh, seems little bit higher okay so based on that he or she may uh, take a decision that this last petal might be red okay so based on the previous uh, previous petals we can make a decision over here but but consider here she has taken only some of nine or eight petals only. Okay, but in a practical scenario, what if we are measuring thousands and thousands of petals together? Okay, we have thousands and thousands of petals, and we are measuring all the measure all the you know length, width, color of each and every petals, and we are putting it in the form of a table. Okay, how a person can able to identify that particular problem? And one more thing. So those petal sizes will not be exactly like this. Okay, it might be very based on the species of that particular flower, the petal size and everything, the color might be very. Okay, so you will be having a broader data set. Okay, in a real time application, obviously you won't get a simple data set like something like this. Okay, it will be very much bigger in size. Okay, so during that time, what will be your approach? Okay, so it's very simple. What I will do is I will plot a graph. Okay, I will plot a graph. So whatever the readings I have taken from the table, I will make it as a x y. Okay, so uh, say for example, my x axis is length and y axis is my width. Okay, and uh, I will put I will plot all the points there from that particular table, okay? and I will also plot the point where I have to find what is the color of my 
unknown petal okay so the question mark which i have plotted on that particular graph you can see right so this question mark i have to find okay which color this particular petal has okay so here if you can see now if i simply put a line okay so you can see some blue regions here and you have you can see some red regions here right so if i put a line in between this blue and red if i draw a line between this blue and red what i can do is i can easily classify between two regions blue region and the red region okay and i can easily say where my question mark falls whether on the blue region or the green region or the red region sorry okay if my question mark falls on the red region i can say the probability of my petal will be high in red okay i can't say exactly it is red can you get my point in mission learning there is no ideal cases there is no exact cases okay you can say 98% this is red 2% it might be blue okay or 99% something like in terms of percentage only you can say the result is this this one and result is that one something like that can you get my point so you need to draw a line okay or in some cases okay or in some cases instead of drawing a line okay instead of drawing a line if you want to draw some you know curve okay in some cases you will get that particular application okay so here uh, the data are very much simpler okay there is only two classifications between uh, red and blue right so in some real time applications instead of two classification you might go for multiple classifications okay your input might be uh, your output might be even 10 or 20 different classes might be there okay during that time a simple line can't separate the outputs okay during that time you need to go for different shapes okay sometimes you need a parabola okay to segregate between the uh, different regions of your data or sometimes you need some ellipse or something like that okay so this is what we call it as machine learning okay so i will explain you with a practical example now have some basic idea okay so first you will prepare some data okay you will collect some data okay like uh, the length and the width which is shown here so you will be collecting some data for an application and you will be plotting that particular data okay and based on that data what you have to do is you have to segregate okay segregate the output what are all the possible outputs you can expect for that particular application okay so the, for this application the possible output is only two one is red or other one is blue okay you have to be, you have to first formulate what are all your inputs what are all your outputs okay using some table or something like that to whatever the application you are having first you formulate that okay so once you formulate you you will get a clear idea on what is the you know algorithm i have to use there okay the first thing is you need to formulate the inputs and the outputs please remember that okay so now so since my question also on the red region i can say the probability of red to be higher here okay so this is very simple and uh, you have lot of applications for this particular area okay so i have uh, mentioned very few applications here so especially like starting from social network analysis okay so in your facebook twitter and all your social medias and all right so there the machine learning algorithm is the one which is running at the background of their server all the big servers like google or amazon or your twitter or linkedin and all all the servers are running powerful machine learning algorithms here, okay in order to identify in order to customize okay whatever the uh, things which you are seeing in your social media say for example uh, i am tagging okay in the previous uh, years i was i used to tag people okay i will put a photo and i will tag their faces there but nowadays what is happening is now slow algorithms are learning okay these algorithms are learning to auto tag itself okay nowadays if you put a photo in uh, facebook and all what happens the face is automatically tagged how it is working because this algorithms this machine learning algorithms are analyzing all the different data putting on the everybody are putting photos on social media right 
so these machine learning algorithms are collecting those photos and analyzing those photos and identifies okay this particular face belongs to this person okay so those kind of analysis are happening because of machine learning okay and one more thing is especially in marketing okay so whatever the you purchase something on the internet right so on the, using online shopping and all so immediately what happens is that particular advertisement will be there in your social media for next one week or two week okay you could have noticed that so how it is happening okay it is happening because so the google what it do is it is acting as a you know the common domain for all your social media and all your online shopping because in online shopping also what you do you log in using your google account only right okay so in most of the amazon or flipkart and all you will be signing up using your google account only right so similarly if you are uh, you know creating any account in facebook or any social media there also you are linking your google account only okay and <laughs> sorry and also in uh, your whatsapp also your whatsapp and all uh, in the recent days it is also synced with your google account okay so what this google can do is it can able to link various servers together okay and it can able to collect your data okay whatever the data okay you are browsing data okay so you are browsing data and uh, even uh, what you like today and what you like tomorrow everything everything can be collected by the google If you, are, if you are having any doubt, okay, you can uh, go and see your my activity inside your Google settings. Okay, if you have your Google account with you, if you go inside your uh, my activity, there is one option called my activity in Google. If you go inside that, you can able to see what are all the browsing data you have done so far. Okay, what are all the videos you have watched, what are the pictures you have seen. Okay, and what are all the things you have purchased. Okay, starting from your location. okay from uh, where all you have traveled okay in order to customize your map google map is there right in order to customize that you need all these data okay these google is collecting from your smartphone and they are using it for their marketing purpose okay so this is not collected by any individual or any uh, a kind of employee and all okay can you get my point it is directly collected by your machine learning algorithm okay your machine algorithm machine learning algorithm is the collecting and analyzing the data and it is making the decision whether you like it or not whether i put a advertisement to you whether you will click it or not can you get my point so in the past years the marketing was broadcasted one okay if any offers needs to be given it will be given in a broadcasted manner it will be given to everybody okay but nowadays what happens is every marketing has become a targeted marketing okay what you like okay what that particular individual like okay based on that only you will get the advertisements can you get my point so there is difference between a broadcasted marketing and the uh, targeted marketing okay now the targeted marketing is the one which is becoming popular nowadays okay this is with the help of machine learning analysis only okay this is one application i wanted to tell you and you have lot of applications here especially like visual data processing and all okay especially in if you if you are having the data in images or videos if you want to classify okay if you have a picture with you and if i want to classify that picture is having cat or dog okay or uh, this person uh, this particular person is dinesh or not something like that if i want to classify or if i want to recognize someone if i want to detect some object in the image or something like that okay for every application we can go for machine learning and nowadays in uh, covid 19 uh, pandemic situation also lots of applications are coming in especially in machine learning okay one application i have uh, seen is something like using the x ray images of your uh, liver okay or your lungs okay they are uh, you know giving this uh, deep learning algorithms to predict how much uh, you know the covid 19 can affect your body so those kind of predictive analysis are happening nowadays and even there is one more uh, beautiful application i have seen uh it is been implemented in one of the company so a camera will be placed in the front okay front side of your company and anybody is entering without a mask okay the mask is compulsory nowadays right so if the person is not wearing any face mask immediately uh, that particular uh, there will be on speaker there okay it will intimate that particular user to wear a mask okay so those kind of applications especially in covid 19 pandemic situations and all coming in okay so especially in deep learning and machine learning and all 
okay so if you have time just you uh, have lot of applications to work on okay and uh, based on this application you have this uh, uh, some applications like natural language processing and sentimental analysis okay so that is an all very interesting algorithms actually so you are using this google translate and all right so google translate so do you, uh, is every people in the world are speaking the same slang okay so are they speaking the same slang if they if they are speaking english okay if they are speaking the english language or everybody is speaking in a same tone or same you know uh, pitch or something like that no but how a computer can able to identify this is the exact word or this is the exact sentence that particular person is speaking that is because by collecting lots and lots of data from your speech okay so using the uh, you know google translate so what it will do is it will collect all your users data based on your speech okay and it will process it using some machine learning algorithm and it is giving the right data okay but at the uh, you know at the starting stage of google translate and all we have placed lot of uh, you know problems there it was not very accurate if you can uh, you know in the previous 2 years or 3 years time if you are speaking something in google translate it will not give you the exact translated output okay there are many flaws was happening there but when time okay when years goes by what happens is this google started to collect all their speeches okay all their voices data okay and started training itself okay the algorithm started to train itself and now it is becoming better and better day by day okay there was lot of critics at the starting stage of google translate it is not very you know easy to implement these kind of technology in uh, uh, very easily in the market okay it should face lot of critics okay so this algorithm started to learn by itself okay and it started to give good results nowadays okay that is what uh, your natural language processing is all about okay for this and all many algorithms is also there okay and these are some of the things just google it you have lot of uh, applications there okay and even uh, in one of my youtube video also i have uh, talked about various applications of ai okay so if you want you just uh, see to that also you will get a clear idea on uh, if you especially if you are looking to do some researches okay this ai will be your uh, very good backbone so to whatever the researches you are doing okay that is one of my suggestion i want to give you and uh, if i want to show you some practical applications of this uh, you know uh, machine learning uh, i have some data with me okay i have some uh, data which is collected from the internet okay so this data will be in the form of excel or it might be in the form of some data file dot data okay something like that with the extension of dot dat so i can have some data file with me okay i can apply any one of the machine learning algorithm and i can classify between the outputs okay that is what i am going to show you now so now if we can see regression is one of the algorithm okay which is used in machine learning uh, which is one of the basic level algorithm which is used for classification okay so i have told you in the previous example right okay in the previous example i have shown you na so you have some red region and the blue region in the graph and if i want to separate that i have to draw a line i told you right so that is nothing but one of the linear regression algorithm so you can see that is the first type of regression algorithm so if i want to classify between two different regions using a line then it comes under linear regression okay and if i want to classify the regions of the data using some parabola or some some different curves okay then it comes under polynomial regression okay where the degree is little bit higher you can't put a single line to segregate the data okay so that is what the polynomial regression is all about likewise for segregating each and every data you need to go for different algorithms okay that is what i have listed over here so i now i will explain you about this linear regression okay so for that i wanted to show you show you entire screen okay just give me a minute i will uh, present you my entire so to uh, execute this kind of algorithms you need to have a platform uh, some uh, programming language platform there so i am using python okay even you can use c or c++ also but python will be very much comfortable for me because you have lot of inbuilt packages to do that okay so to do all the calculations and all so it will be very much easier when you do this uh, python okay 
So I'm having Python version 3.7.1. This is one of the prerequisites. Uh, prerequisite I wanted to tell you. Please note it down. So you can download this uh, package from the internet. It is an open source one. Okay. Python 3.7 idle. You can directly download it from the Google. Okay. And uh, in this, you can uh, type your programs here. Okay. So I'm going to show you one example. Okay. For this linear ex linear regression. So consider I have a data with me. Okay. That data is the uh, you know that data is being collected from one of the uh, community where you have a lot of houses okay you have one community in that say you have 100 houses or 200 houses okay the homes okay so this uh, data will consist of how much rent they are paying okay and what is the salary each individuals are getting what is their pay scale Okay, and is there any loan possibility? The house loans, how many people have uh, you know incurred, and lot all, all these applications based on that uh, you know community, there will be a lot of different data collected from that particular houses. Okay, and what is their population there? Okay, all these data I have with me. Okay, I have uh, I have downloaded from the internet. Okay, so if you can see the data uh, file will look something. Like this, okay, normally if you collect it from the internet. So the data file will be something like this, okay? So you can see some list of data is there, right? So each and every column has its own meaning, okay? Now the data file will not give you any inferences, okay? It will be something like vague one, okay? Don't get confused. This so they will give a description for the data file while you are downloading itself. They will give a separate description for what is this data file is all about, okay? So from reading the description, you will know. What this column is supposed to do. Okay, so here you will be having some n number of columns here. Each column has its own value, own meaning. Okay, say for example, this column uh, might, uh, you know, the fourth column might be for, uh, you know, uh, the average age of the persons who are, uh, you know, staying in that particular house or something like that. Okay, so you have different data here. Okay, so I have downloaded this data and I am going to apply a linear regression. Go to this particular data, and I am going to identify. Okay, I am going to identify how much rent we can fix for this particular house. Okay, how much uh, rent we can fix for this particular community? Okay, based on these data, I am going to analyze that. Okay, their age, based on their uh, loan repayments, based on their salary. Okay, I am going to analyze. Okay, what is the Rent I can fix for this particular persons, for this particular houses. For this, I am going to apply this linear regression algorithm. Are you getting my point? Okay. So first, I need to load this housing data into my into my Python program. Okay. So please remember, always there is an extension in Excel called CSV, right? Comma separated, uh, you know, file. So that CSV file is the one which is the base for collecting the data. Okay, because the format of those those files cannot be changed. Okay, that is the reason we are preferring CSV files instead of the other extensions. Okay, so here I am taking the data from housing dot data extension. If you can see here, this is the data file which I have. Okay, housing dot data. Okay, I have collected the data from this particular file. And I am reading it in the form of CSV. Okay, I am reading it in the form of CSV. So as I told you before, CSV file is the one which doesn't, which cannot be changed. Okay, the format of that file cannot be changed. Okay, that is why I am reading the data in CSV. For that, I have a function called read CSV. Okay, this read CSV function is available inside a library called pandas. Please make a note of it if you want to do. Okay, if you want to do any sort of manipulations or any sort of uh, analysis on a data, okay, on a group of data, then this pandas library will be very much helpful for you. In order to group it, okay, in order to sort that particular data, or in order to you know uh, make it as a CSV, okay, easily accessible. Okay, if you want to make some data easily accessible, I will go for the library called pandas. Okay. And that is the first step we have to do. First, we have to make ready with the data. 
okay using the pandas library okay and the second thing is we have to identify what are all the columns available inside our data okay first we need to identify that okay why do we need to identify that is because we need to select which column will be suitable for our application because if you collect the data you will be having n number of columns there okay you don't need to use all the data there all the columns there okay so you have to select which column has the more impact on the output okay please note this point this is a very important point whenever you collect the data from online or from your manual interaction if you are collecting some data first step is you need to select the columns which has more impact on the output okay now the output is how much rent you are going to fix that is going to be your output right so which column will have more impact on that whether the age or the loan repayment or the salary okay which will have more impact on that particular output first you need to identify okay and you have to neglect the remaining columns from that particular data okay only if you do that your machine learning algorithm will give you the maximum accuracy okay if the data is okay if that uh, if that particular data which you are collecting is inaccurate definitely whatever the machine learning algorithm you are applying there okay the result will be inaccurate only okay so the data has to be collected very carefully and it has to be selected very carefully okay in order to select it there are various methods to do that okay so one of the participants has given it as income right okay so that is very good because if i want to fix a rent for a house the income column is one of the major thing okay that is one of the major uh, column which has the impact on the direct impact on the output okay so i can select that income column okay so so here we can able to simply select which column is best for my output okay but whereas consider you have thousands and thousands of columns with you okay i have collected a data which has thousands of columns with me and i want to you know i want to analyze which will have good impact on the output okay so during that time i have a beautiful library called seaborn okay you can see here a beautiful library called seaborn which is nothing but a plotting library okay so if i want to visualize something if i want to place it in the form of uh, you know graph or if i want to visualize it in the form of uh, chart or something like that for analyzing so for the first step is you need to visualize the data okay so for that i have a beautiful library called seaborn okay so in this seaborn we have one option called different plotting mechanisms like heat maps okay pair plots in pair plot and all you can able to compare between the columns okay if you want to find out what is the impact i can use this pair plot or you know heat maps from the seaborn library and i can able to identify how much this column has the impact on this particular column i can compare between the columns inside a single data file so for this and all you have lot of applications there so say for example if you can see here so there is one uh, option i have used sns dot pair plot okay similarly i have used another function called sns dot heat map okay so these uh, functions will let you compare between the columns okay in the pair plot what i did is i have compared these five columns from my data okay and i can able to get some inference there okay which column will have impact on uh, another column something like that okay in terms of color they might have given okay while running this program i will show you okay so i'll just run this program and i will show you then you you will get a clear idea about that so directly you should not go for machine learning algorithm that is what i am trying to stress you okay at first the data is very very important okay you have to do lot of analysis on the data then only you have to take it to the algorithm stage okay otherwise you will uh, you know uh, spoil the accuracy okay the output accuracy will be spoiled so first i will run this program so since the data is very much high okay so the data that has to be loaded so it is very much higher it will be in thousands so now you can see this is the pair plot which i am going to show you 
Okay, this is the figure one, which is the SMS dot pair plot. Here you can see I am comparing between five columns. Okay, there is there are columns like crimson, indus, cas, and mid. Okay, so these are different columns from my housing data. Okay, what I am going to do is I am going to compare between these data. Okay, so now you can see what kind of inference you can take here is so if you compare this CHAS column and crim column. Okay, let's consider this particular plot. Okay, so I'll just uh, here. So there is one graph which is plotted here: CHAS versus crim. Okay, this particular plot. Please consider this particular plot which is over here. So here you can see. Uh, there are some points at 1.0 and there are some points on 0.0 okay so here what i can say is this is binary classification okay so if you want if you want if you are doing any analysis between these two columns then you can go for binary classification algorithms because here output is just two either it is 1.0 or 0.0 okay here the classification is very much simple Okay, so directly I can go for some binary classification algorithms to uh, classify between these two data here. So if I want to find what is crim from cas, I can do that. Or if I want to find what is my cas from crim, then also I can do that. Okay, and if you consider some graph, something like this. Okay, so this is the graph which is plotted, uh, the last one. Okay, so in the uh, say for example, if you take the graph. Indus and MEDB. Okay, in the second row, last column. Okay, if you take the graph from the second row and the last column, there you can see the dots are very much you know placed unevenly. Okay, so during this time, the binary classification alone will not work here. Okay, if you want to do any analysis between this uh, second row and the last column, okay, that is between ZIN and MEDB. Okay, here the binary classification will never work out. Here I have to go for different classification algorithm. There, okay, for these kind of analysis, okay, using these pair plots only you can able to make. Okay, this is one thing I wanted to show you. And as I told you before, if you want to find out which column has impact on the output, okay, so this heat map can be used. Okay, this is the heat map. So here you can see all your columns will be plotted here. Okay, so now take example of your, uh, you know, uh, the column called age. Okay, there is one column called age, right? So here the age column will have more impact. Okay, it will have more impact on on particular area where the color is little bit lighter. Okay, if you can see uh, the scale which you have the heat map scale they have given on the right side, right? So more the lighter area, the maximum the impact is. Okay, so if you can see the it is growing from dark, so it is black color at the bottom and at the lighter area at the top, right? So black is having the lesser impact when it compared to you know the 0.9 area. There you can see a lighter color there. Okay, so based on the color difference, you can say whether there is a higher impact or the lower impact. So so here if I want to check in the age column. Which has the which other column has the higher impact on age? If I want to find out that, you will just look into you will just compare the numbers inside this particular age column. Okay, if you can compare here, it is zero point three five, zero point five seven, zero point five seven is minus zero point five seven. So that has lower impact on that particular column. Okay, you don't need to consider that. And if you can see here, uh, which is the lighter area? This one, zero point seven three. Okay, so 0.73 is the column which has the lighter area for your age. So that is nothing but your Knox column. Okay, so from that you can say this Knox column has higher impact on your age column. Okay, so likewise, if you want to calculate between, okay, between the columns, and if you want to identify which is which is having more impact, you can use this heat map. Okay, so as I told you before, in order to group your Datas. Okay, if you want to group your data, if you have to, you know, uh, put it in a readable format, then you have to go for Pandas library. Okay, and if you want to visualize and if you want to do some analysis on the data, okay, then you have to go for Seaborn library. Please make a note of it. First is Pandas, and the second library is Seaborn. 
okay once you have done that okay once you have made all your analysis okay um, after that what you can do is you can go for linear regression okay here what i did is okay so i have compared two columns here okay i have taken any two columns and i have uh, you know given the linear algorithm you know linear uh, regression algorithm there okay so here what happens is in the previous case in the previous example as i told you first we have to plot the graph okay in x axis and y axis i have to first plot the data which is available inside those columns okay i have plotted with the help of uh, blue color dots here okay and uh, i have drawn one line here okay if you can see that i have drawn one line here okay this line is drawn automatically by your linear regression algorithm that is the beauty here okay i have not drawn this line actually okay so i have used one function called fit there is one function in uh, machine learning always okay so if you can see model dot fit okay so this fit particular function what it will do is it will draw a line okay it will draw a line with between the data okay so this line will try to segregate this uh, this line will try to classify between the two data from two different columns okay if i first at first at first if you if you call this fit okay if you uh, call this particular fit what it will do is first it will draw a line randomly okay first it will draw a line randomly and what it will do is it will calculate how much deviation from my data is that particular line okay i if first it will draw a line randomly on that particular graph okay and identify what is the error occurred there okay and if the error is more it will automatically start to what adjust the line okay automatically the line will be adjusted at some up to some point okay at one point what will happen is you will get the maximum accuracy okay maximum accuracy of classification say for example if you are attaining 88% okay that 88% is the maximum accuracy that can be given using this linear regression okay at that point of time your line will stop to adjust okay so this is something like you know probability okay it is something like a probability and statistic kind of thing okay first it will randomly plot the line and it will start to adjust that line accordingly where it reaches the maximum accuracy okay so this is the maximum accuracy i have achieved okay by plotting this particular line so this is the position of the line so how will you say the position of the line in mathematics using its slope okay always remember if in uh, linear regression if you say what is my position of my line okay it is uh, said with the help of the slope and the coefficient okay there is two things you, you have to understand two things here one is the slope and other one is the coefficient if you if this is just the line equation if you see the line equation mx plus c there you can see one is the slope and other one is the coefficient right so based on that only you can fix the position of the line okay so the output of this linear regression will be the position of your line only what is your coefficient after the fitting what will be your coefficient what will be your slope and what is the accuracy obtained this is the expected output you can get from a linear uh, linear regression okay here i have this particular plot so i have easily drawn a line and i have segregated the data here okay but the same scenario will not happen in all the data okay here it is very easy okay all your data are clubbed together in the center right all if you can see this picture all the data are clubbed together in the center so that i can easily draw one line and i can able to segregate this okay and i can able to get some good accuracy here but whereas in some cases the data will not be like this okay the data will not be like this in some cases how it will be is it will be little bit deviated okay i will also show that then you will get a clear idea so if we can uh, see then see here here the data is not even okay like the previous data if you can see so when you compare uh, uh, this data okay with the previous data then you can see in the previous data all your datas were uh, clubbed together in the center right so you can easily draw a line and you can able to segregate it right but whereas here if you can see it is not even okay it is something like uh, you know if you put a line also what will happen so say for example i am drawing a line in this particular data okay 
So I'm going to draw a line something like this. Okay, this will not give me a better accuracy. You can see, so lot of my data are away from this line. You can see here, right? So some of the data on the left side and some of the data on the right side, but it is not equally partitioned. You can see here, right? It is not equally partitioned. So during this kind of situation, what I have to do is instead of going for line, then I have to go for some curve, something like this. Now, if we can see here, instead of drawing a line, now I have drawn a curve to segregate this line. Now, all my data are falling near to my particular curve. Okay, here the accuracy will be a little bit higher. Always remember, in regression algorithm, all your data has to be near your line or near your curve. Okay, how that is the deviation or that is the you know that is the uh, precision okay the, that i can say that is the deviation that is the error you can see so if uh, if more the if more the deviation okay if the data is uh, deviated from your line with a higher that means what the error is higher okay if the dot is if the particular data is very much near that particular line that means that particular area the error is very less the accuracy is very much higher can you get my point so you have to choose which uh, which structure I need to draw, whether a line or a curve or something like that. Okay. In the previous case, that was linear regression. In this case, this polynomial regression. Now, can you able to understand the difference between that? So, linear regression means using a line you can segregate the data. But whereas, if you draw a curve and if you want to segregate the data, then that is your polynomial regression because here the degree of the structure is the degree of your line is more. In the previous case, it was just linear. Here it is polynomial. Can you get my point? So based on the data, you have to select which algorithm to prefer. That is the important thing. Okay. So this polynomial regression and uh, these uh, all these regression types, right? So that you can directly use functions. Okay. So in Python, you have a library called sklearn. Okay. At first, we have seen the library called pandas, right? And the second, we came to seaborn. Okay, like similar to Seaborn, there is one more library called uh, Matplotlib. Okay, both are similar, but for analyzing the impacts of your columns. Okay, if, uh, if you want to analyze the impacts of each and every data, I would prefer Seaborn. Okay, if you want to plot these linear regression or uh, these kind of things, okay, uh, uh, these kind of you know uh, scattering plot or something like that, then I will prefer Matplotlib. But in your program, you have to go for both. Okay, for pre-analysis. Okay, for pre-analysis of your data, you need to go for Seaborn. For post-analysis data, you have to go for the library called Matplotlib. Okay, so that will be very much efficient for you. Okay, so and then now the fourth library which we are seeing is sklearn. Okay, this is one of the beautiful library sklearn which has all the uh, you know algorithms like linear regression law polynomial regression okay and uh, support vector machine okay you have a lot of different type of machine learning algorithms are available as a package inside this sklearn which you can install from the you know uh, in your python and you can make use of it okay so you can directly use this say for example if i want to use the linear algorithm there is one function directly to do that so linear regression Okay, and uh, this uh, this particular function is stored inside an object called LR, and if I use LR dot fit, automatically the line will be drawn. Okay, so now if I want to use polynomial regression instead of linear regression, then I have to go for another uh, area where I will use okay uh, I will use the degree okay the degree as three okay. So instead of the degree as zero, here I will be using degree of three. So in order to use the polynomial feature inside my regression algorithm, okay. So you have a lot of uh, inbuilt uh, functions, a lot of inbuilt packages are available in the inside this SKLM. You can make use of it, okay. So this is one thing I wanted to show you. So this is how the machine learning works, okay. And uh, now if you can see, these are some of the lists of machine learning algorithm which is available okay i have shown you only the regression one likewise you have lots and lots of algorithms are there okay each and everything is classified with the help of their mathematical equation please remember each algorithm has its own mathematical equation okay so whenever you are trying to do research on that please go for mathematical uh, equations don't go for directly to the library 
okay if you go directly uh, using the library and packages if you are implementing some application you won't get the necessary knowledge of that particular algorithm especially in research i'm saying okay and if you are focusing only on the application in the packages okay if you are going for research please look into the mathematical model okay so that is very much important if you want to do any research on that okay so next algorithm i wanted to show you is neural networks so this neural network is something like very much similar to how your brain works okay how your brain works okay your brain has billions and billions of neurons with you right so similarly this neural network is constructed using a python program or using a, a c or c++ program okay using some programming language we will construct this particular network neural network okay so here you can see lots of circles inside this network right so this circles are nothing but your neurons here we call it as nodes okay nodes each and every circle is nothing but nodes okay so most probably this neural network is used for okay classifying between the data of images okay in the previous cases we have used the regression for classifying the textual data right the the words text something like that we have used the regression algorithm but whereas if your data set is having images okay and if you want to do some classifications there then i have to go for classification algorithms like neural network okay i will tell you how it works okay here you have to give the input on one side and you have to take the output on other side okay so the input you are giving is nothing but the image okay how can you give the image as the input okay so here uh, image has to be considered as a array of pixels please consider like that image means it is not a you know please don't consider don't visualize it in the form of a normal picture okay now what you have to do imagine the image as a array of pixels okay so if you say 28 cross 28 image what happens so you have 28 into 28 number of pixels inside that particular image that is the resolution okay if you take in your cameras and all in your mobile phones and all it is 32 megapixel right so 32 megapixel means 32 into 10 to the power of 6 pixels so that much pixels are having inside a single picture which you take from your mobile okay so now what i have to do i have to take all these pixels okay each pixel will have its own value please remember that if it is a color image okay if it is a color image each pixel will have three values one is r g b okay this r g b will vary from the value between 0 to 255 since that is a 8 bit so your uh, r value will be varying between 0 to 255 likewise g and b okay based on this values only the color of that particular pixel will be decided okay so now i have such a value with me okay such arrays of values are with me now okay now what i am going to do is i am going to give this array of values inside my neural network okay here you can see input x1 input x2 input x3 right so that is nothing but the pixel values of your image x1 x2 x3 that is the pixel values of each and every image okay if i say 28 cross 28 okay that means that much amount of input nodes are needed in order to take the values from those pixels can you understand my point say for example my image has the resolution of just 5 cross 5 that means what is the total amount of uh, pixel there it's 25 okay 5 cross 5 means the total amount of pixel is just 5 sorry 25 okay now what i have to do i need to have 25 amount of input nodes should be available inside my neural network okay so based on your input image resolution you have to select number of nodes at the input of your neural network okay so now i have collected all the data from my pixels now what i have to do is i need to pass on to various other layers okay your neural network has different layers in between okay here in this image there is only one layer between your input layer and the output layer that is we call it as hidden layer okay in various cases we will be having including multiple layers in between these input and the output layers okay that is based on the application okay here in this image only one layer is included okay what is the use of this layer is always remember in neural network there is one thumb rule okay whenever a data passes inside a node okay when it comes out of that particular node automatically what will happen is 
the value will be adjusted please remember this point okay if i am sending five okay a value called five inside a node inside a neural network node when it is coming out okay what happened to that five is that five will be changed okay that five will be changed to 10 or it might be reduced to 2 or some okay so some change will be happening in that particular data when it comes out of a node always remember this point okay how much change it will have okay that is the point we call it as weight okay weight okay so say for example each and every node in a neural network has its own weight okay so say for example your first node has the weight of 2 the value 2 your weight of the first node is 2 okay and the input x1 is 5 okay so say for example i'll just uh, uh, draw it and show you so my input is now 5 okay my input x1 is 5 okay and the weight of the first node is 2 okay and there is one more term called bias okay don't worry about that just consider the weight term alone okay now when this five enters the first node and when it comes out of the node automatically what will happen is it will become 10 this is the thumb rule you need to understand okay so each and every node will have its own weight some will have 5 2 1 3 something like that so base it is randomly first distributed okay this weights will be randomly distributed to each and every node at the start of the algorithm okay now when i apply the input image input image values to this particular neural network based on the weights the weight will be applied on that particular data and the resultant output will be obtained at each and every stage okay so now at the end at the output stage at the output nodes i will be getting some data there okay i will be getting some data at the end so like if i say my input x1 is 5 and my weight is 2 and i got the intermediate output as 10 okay this 10 will be again the input to the hidden node okay hidden node might have the weight as 3 okay my hidden node will have the weight 3 so this 10 enters this hidden node and it is multiplied with this 3 and it will give the output as 30 can you get my point so this is how the manipulation works okay from one data to the output data from the input data to the output data like this only the manipulation the data will be keep on changing and output side it is getting as 30 okay let's consider your output y1 is 30 okay now what i have to do at the output stages i have to make make some threshold decision okay that we call it as cost function okay so based on how my output should be okay so say for example my image is having a cat okay i am going to input a cat image to this neural network okay and i need to get the output as cat okay i need to identify whether this image is a cat or dog okay for that i am having two outputs there y1 is cat and y2 is dog okay so if uh, if my, if i am inputting a cat image i might be getting 30 as the output okay here i have to put one if else condition there something like normally you do in c and c++ and all right so i will put a small if else condition there if my data is more than 30 i will say it is cat okay just for an example i'm saying just let's assume okay if my value which i got is less than 30 then it is cat if it is more than 30 then that is dog okay something like that some decisional uh, parameter some decisional analysis i will make it at the output stage using some programming language okay so now i am inputting a cat image and my output i got is lesser than 30 okay my output is correct okay what if my output is more than 30 that means dog okay i have input the cat image my decision has given me dog immediately what i have to do i have to adjust i will come back and adjust all these weight parameters inside my nodes okay i have given 2 10 uh, 30 something like that right so that data that weights of that particular nodes will be adjusted okay that will be automatically adjusted and again the computation will happen and it will come up cross whether it is less than 30 or greater than 30 again if it is greater than 30 again it shows error 
so immediately i will come back and i will change all the weights and then then i will see the result okay i will keep on repeating this process until i get the accurate output can you get my point okay this is for one image i am saying please remember i am saying this is just for one image okay likewise i have to do it for thousands and thousands of image in order to make my neural network understand whether it is a cat or dog okay so how to make this neural network understand okay so that is nothing but the last adjusted weight na so once you get the higher accuracy you will be having the last adjusted weights that is nothing but the trained model okay there is two things the untrained model and the trained model okay untrained model means the weights are not adjusted it is fresh and it is randomly distributed and it's ready to take the inputs that is untrained model but whereas after seeing all the errors after adjusting all the weights i am getting a uh, accuracy right so that is the trained model now i can use this trained model to predict whatever the real time data i have okay i can take some real time picture from my camera and i can given to the trained model and i can say whether it is a cat or dog it's very very simple okay here one more important thing is i have told about weights right okay if you want to increase okay sometimes sometimes so you are you are finding some errors and you are coming back and you are adjusting the weights okay again you are showing some errors again you are coming back and you are adjusting the weights sometimes you need to speed up this process okay sometimes if you want to uh, you know accurately if you want to without decreasing the accuracy if you want to increase the speed of training because i am having thousands and thousands of images with me right i will be having thousands and thousands of images how much time it will take to train okay that is also one of the parameter we have to consider okay that is purely based on the computation power of your system your uh, laptop and your computer okay so you have lot of things to do that so for adjusting those things okay for optimizing that thing including weight we have one more parameter called bias okay there's one more parameter called bias always remember this bias term will be added at the end of your result okay say for example my input is 5 and my node has the weight of 2 okay the output will be 10 okay this 10 will be always added with the bias term okay this bias term can be anything it can be another numerical value only please remember it is also something like your weight only it is also a numerical value which supports the training process okay it's just to give a support to your training process please don't uh, you know this is actually a mathematical model okay so as i told you before each and every algorithm will have its own mathematical model right so in neural network also this is one of the mathematical model you have to go deep into it okay i'm just giving a overall idea about it please remember it. now I, i i think you could have got something from this neural network right so likewise uh, using this uh, neural network or deep learning kind of application uh, i can't go directly for you know python kind of application so python kind of ideals okay for regression and all we have used this platform right so likewise in deep learning and all you can't use this you can but you have to install lot of complex packages and you have to use lot of memories from your you know system and you have to waste lot of time there so instead what you can do is there is one complete package called anaconda please make a note of it i have list, i have shown i have uh, told you some list of packages right please make a note of it otherwise you will forget it okay now i have uh, told you about anaconda there is one package called anaconda which will have all the necessary packages to do the deep learning and neural network kind of analysis okay so this can be available directly from the google you can download it and uh, you can install it inside your system okay so this is the offline version okay this uh, anaconda is the offline version for doing all your uh, uh, machine learning and deep learning kind of analysis there okay and uh, and lots of customizations are possible you can uh, easily you know you can able to customize your library itself okay that is very important thing because lot of online platforms are there including google collab and all there the customization is very much uh, difficult okay so based on how what they are giving okay based on what is the you know uh, the packages they are giving they based on that only you can able to do some analysis there but whereas here this, since this is an offline version you can create a model and it is platform independent also you can uh, you know put it in your laptop 
or you can put it inside your uh, microcontrollers or processors okay wherever you want you can take the trained model and you can use it, easily use it in the uh, functions there okay that will be very useful for you so if you take anaconda okay so once you install uh, anaconda you will get one uh, uh, software called anaconda prompt okay the anaconda prompt is very much similar to your command prompt which you use in uh, uh, windows platform right so anaconda prompt anaconda prompt is very much similar to that here i am going to use a package called tensor flow as navin gupta sir has asked me so i am going to use a, a package called tensor flow to do the neural network and uh, deep learning kind of analysis there okay so first uh, once this tensor flow is installed inside your system okay inside your anaconda platform in most of the anaconda platform it will come by default otherwise you have to install it using some keywords okay so i will tell you how to install this anaconda it's very simple you have to use a keyword called give me a minute there is one uh, keyword you can use it because tensor flow installation some might uh, feel it is very difficult but it actually it is very easy actually so just in one hour or two hour you can install this tensor flow package so just you need to follow this particular which is over here so just i will uh, zoom it and show you please make a note of it if you want to install tensor flow inside your anaconda uh, environment first you have to create one virtual environment it will take some one hour or two hour based on your internet connection and your uh, system specification it will take some time okay once it is installed successfully after that you have you can use a command called conda activate tf okay you have to use the command called conda activate tf okay so once the tensor flow is installed in my system the tensor flow is already installed what i can do is i can directly uh, put so uh, now if i put uh, conda activate i will put the keyword there tf okay now what will happen because my tensor flow is already installed i can directly activate this tf environment so now you, you can see it has changed from base environment to tf environment okay base environment is the one where my actual default system is there okay now i have changed it to the virtual environment named tf okay now i can use the tensor flow library okay inside this i can create whatever the python program i want using the tensor flow library okay i have one uh, library i have one program with me okay so this is to uh, you know classify okay this program is to classify between uh, cat and dog okay so i will uh, i will just run it and show you um just give me a minute so i just want to run it using python keyword this you all know i hope so if you are good in python you will know about this so i need to insert the path of my uh, uh, file python file so my python file name is cat versus dog cat versus dog dot uh, py okay and if i do that uh, uh, so it will take some time okay before that i will uh, tell you what this program actually do okay so if you can go inside this particular uh, program so i have used the library called tensorflow okay there is a library called uh, tensorflow there and i have used one more library called kiras okay there is one more library called kiras so this kiras is the one which is used for creating the layers i told you na in neural network you have the input layer hidden layers and output layers and all okay so this hidden layers will have its own names like convolution layer max pooling layer okay flatten layer dense layer you have lot of different names for this hidden layers okay so that is uh, especially if you are doing deep learning and all the layers will be huge please don't think that uh, as the picture i have shown you it is very much similar very much simpler okay it is not like that in real time application the number of layers inside a neural network will be huge it will be in hundreds and thousands okay please consider that okay so your input image pixel has to cross this much amount of layers and then it has to come to the output layer okay please remember that so in order to create those layers we will use kiras library okay and if you want to manage this network okay
okay if you want to train this network and if you want to adjust the rates all these management things na that will be taken care by your tensor flow library please remember i am i am naming few of the libraries please make it down, make a note of it so tensor flow is for managing your neural network okay all your weight adjustments accuracy management all these things will be taken care by your tensor flow all your mathematical equations okay but whereas uh, to construct your uh, you know neural network by inserting the nodes inserting the layers and everything your kiras library will taken care of that can you get my point okay so and uh, there is one more library called numpy okay so in the previous case we have seen one library called pandas right so a pandas what it will do it will arrange the data right so you have some group of data with you and if you want to arrange it in the form of an array or in the form of csv or something like that you will use pandas uh, library right similar to this this numpy is the one which is going to represent your image in the form of pixel array please remember this point because direct image cannot be used for any kind of analysis it has to be represented as an array array of pixels then only it can be uh, used for analysis so that purpose is taken care by your numpy library okay once it is done if i want to show out the result to visualize the result as i told you like cborn there is one more library called matplotlib right so that is what another library i have imported here okay and what is the possible output of my uh, neural network here either it will be cat or either it will be dog okay based on the output threshold i have to uh, check whether it is a cat or dog okay that is the thing okay and one more important thing here is if you want to construct a neural network to identify whether the image has a cat or dog then you need to have thousands and thousands of cat images and thousands and thousands of dog images please remember this since this is deep learning the number of data inside a data set is needed is very much higher okay so the resolution of each and every data will be also very much higher okay so in order to train such a data please remember to have a good system with you okay so your system your laptop or your computer system has to be very much good enough to handle this training please remember that okay and uh, most probably we prefer gpus okay graphical processing unit instead of cpus okay cpus will have good computational power but still gpu will have uh, you know more uh, you know uh, the specifications on these kind of image kind of processing okay so i would prefer gpu uh, inbuilt laptops or gpu inbuilt computers okay especially you have some dedicated hardware also like your uh, jetson nano boards and all is there right so have you worked on that so there is one uh, 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 there is one uh, company called NBA DAA, right? So in most of your laptops, uh, your graphical card will be manufactured by that particular company, NBA DAA. So they have introduced one of the dedicated hardware called Jetson Nano. Okay, so that Jetson Nano can also be used for dedicated processor. Yes, of course, uh, uh, Miss uh, Bagirani Ma'am uh, said we can use cloud also, but the thing is, uh, if I want to deploy it somewhere. Okay, if I want to collect some, uh, you know, real time in sensor data, and if I want to do some analysis, and I want to place it inside a robo, or if I want to make it as a compact one, or something like that. Okay, then every time what I have to do is I have to be in connection with the cloud. That is one problem we have to face. Okay, once you have trained your model in the cloud, you can take the the model file and you can able to run it inside your system. That is a secondary. but once you run it inside your system what will happen is if if uh, if that particular system sees a different input okay so it has to train itself right so in some areas in some application the robot has to train itself okay so uh, by using the pre trained model we can use uh, online platform man but what happens is if you are if you want your system to train by itself based on the real time scenarios then you have to go for some inbuilt training uh, hardware okay the uh, supported hardware has to be there so like your jetson and or something like that it is capable of getting the data and train there itself and it can able to give the output something like that okay so for those application we can make use of some gpu supported hardware there okay now we need such a data set now okay so like cat and dog we need thousands of images from them okay so that you can download it directly from the internet okay so that part is included in my program okay in my program itself it is included 
so you don't need to download it separately okay you don't need to uh, download it separately in my program itself it is included i'll show you where it is now if we can see there is one url i have mentioned there right so storage dot google apis so from this url directly i can fetch the file using the kiras library okay there is one uh, option called get file okay using the get file option inside the kiras library i can able to download my data set directly from the internet and please remember that this data set should be in a form of zip file okay because most of your data sets will be maintained inside your google drive also right so the inside the google drive you have to make this uh, data in the form of zip file okay so using get file function i will take that data and i will segregate into uh, different uh, sets like training set and testing set okay say for example you are having 1000 uh, uh, pictures with you okay first i need to segregate between some percent of uh, data as training and some percent of data as testing okay say for example 50% i am making it as training and 50% i am making it as testing okay so i have to segregate that first okay so once you segregate that then i can do what is i can construct a neural network model okay so how much input layer should be there how much uh, hidden layer hidden layer means the convolution layer max pooling layer so all the different layers how it should be placed how much uh, nodes each and every layer should have all these things has to be constructed using the kiras library okay that is what uh, done here so if you can see here so in this particular passage i am going to create a sequential ne neural networking model so sequential means one after the other so the input will be carried out from one layer to the another okay in a sequential manner okay so the inside the sequential function what i am doing is first i am creating one convolution layer okay and the next layer is max pooling layer and i am having three max consecutive max pooling layer here okay and finally a flatten layer and the output layer okay my output layer consists of only one node can you see here your dense is nothing but your output layer okay here your output layer consists of only one node okay so that means either it will give you either as a cat or a dog okay if the value is more than 30 it is cat if the value is less than 30 it is dog something like that okay so you need only one node at the at the output right that is enough based on the value you can decide so that is why i given the output layer as just one okay once you construct such a neural network what you can do is you can compile you are uh, model you can use the fit function to generate your training okay once you, once the training is started it will be looking something like this okay so i will show you in the output screen so your your training output will be something like this okay uh, i will zoom it and show you so from this output screen itself you can infer very uh, uh, you know good amount of information here so you can see uh there is one term called epoch right epoch is nothing but the iteration okay say for example you are having uh, some images with you each and every image how much time the training has to be so that how much time your image has to be introduced into the training phase okay say for example you can fix it okay how much amount of epoch you need you can fix it in my program i have fixed the epoch as 10 so that means what each and every image will be trained for 10 times because uh, as i told you before the weights and biases will be distributed randomly at first right okay so at uh, some instant this randomly distributed weight also has could have given you a good result okay instead of adjusting it could have itself given you some good result right so we have to introduce our uh, image for uh, some, some n number of times to the training okay in a number of times to the training so in order to give a better accuracy inside our result okay that is why i have fixed the epoch as 10 so 10 times each and every image will be introduced inside your training phase okay and here what happens is inside each and every training phase all your images will be trained that means all your weights and biases will be adjusted okay at each and every time it is getting adjusted so it will give you the result at that particular point what is the loss and what is the accuracy okay so far in my training phase okay i have got the accuracy as 0.64 okay this is very much minimum okay if i increase the epoch or I, if i increase the you know the method of algorithm or whatever the layers which is inside my uh, neural network so if i adjust that i might increase the 
accuracy okay here i have got only 0.64 so the result will be that much only okay so i need to change that so my laptop will not have that much specific addition so i have reduced the epoch as just to 10 and please remember you should not increase this epoch to, to the very much higher level also sometimes what will happen is if there is any noise in your image okay the input image if there is any noise or blurred area inside your image that will also be over trained there is also another possibility if the epoch is very high okay then the noise will also be enlarged inside your output okay then it will also affect your accuracy please remember that so you have to fix the optimized one so you have to do some lots and lots of trial and error there okay so that is the reason i told you you need to know the mathematical model of each and every algorithm okay you can able to make some decision on what is the uh, you know epoch i have to keep and what is the uh, number of layers i have to make so all these things can be calculated only with the help of mathematical model only especially if you are doing research please go for it okay so i think uh, i could have given you some idea about uh, what is machine learning deep learning and all those stuff and please don't worry about the layers which i have mentioned there convolution layer and the max pooling layer or something like that so please remember all these layers are going to reduce the dimensionality of your image okay so that is the key point you have to remember okay because i'll just show you that so it is very simple don't confuse with that term convolution layer max pooling and all those layers that is very simple layers that will just reduce the dimensionality of your image because your real time image will be 64 megapixel or 32 megapixel right so that much big amount of pixel cannot be processed in, inside a uh, simple neural network it will take much time can you get my point so in order to uh, do that we have to go for these kind of convolution layer if you can see in this particular slide what it is doing it is converting a image of 5 cross 5 okay it is converting an image of 5 cross 5 Into a result team of just three cross three, it is just reducing the dimensionality. So whenever you are passing your image inside a neural network, it's reducing the dimensionality, but not its characteristics. Can you get my point? The characteristics of the image is not changed. Only the dimensionality of the image is changed. You can get back to the original image also. That that is why I'm saying. Okay, and this is what your convolution layer do. So it will what it will do is basically it will apply a window on your image. Okay, the is here the yellow color area na so that is nothing but your window okay that window has the size of 3 cross 3 okay when you apply this 3 cross 3 window on your 5 cross 5 image you will get the resultant output okay so the resultant output will be calculated by the multiplication a simple uh, sum of multiplication only okay if you can see here the window will have a value of 1010 101 so if you can look closely inside the window you will be having one multiplication factor there na 1010 something like that okay that value will be multiplied with the value of the image and finally all the values will be added and you will get a resultant value so likewise only you will get the uh, reduced dimensionality image as the output okay likewise in uh, max pooling layer also the same thing is happening here instead of applying a window with a value instead what we will do is we will take the average value or the maximum value inside a 3 cross 3 area okay if you can see here the orange part is your original image okay and the brown color part is your window okay when i apply this window on that particular area 3 cross 3 area what will happen is inside that area which value is the highest one so that will be taken as the output can you get my point in this case the highest value is 3 at each 3 cross 3 areas of your uh, image the 3 is the highest value so that will be taken as the output okay so likewise in max pooling or average pooling so the dimensionality is again reduced so from 5 cross 5 again reduced to 3 cross 3 something like that okay so likewise you can construct how much ever layers you want you can construct so say for example so this is your input uh, input layer and it is taken to the convolution layer some group of convolution layers it is not one convolution layer you are taking it to the group of convolution layer and after that you are taking it to the max pooling layer and from the max pooling layer all your dimensionalities will be reduced okay now you can directly take it to the your neural network and you can get the output okay this is how it works okay this is how your deep learning works okay i think i could have given you lot of inputs uh, 
uh, some basics of it i hope okay and uh, if you have any queries you can ask okay and you can use google collab also so you can directly uh, uh, go inside your chrome and if you can type google collab you can create a google account there okay and inside that what you can do is uh, you can uh, you can make use of the online servers okay instead of uh, training your system okay instead of training your data inside your offline uh, laptops and computers you can train inside your online servers itself okay the online servers will be very much faster and will be having good specifications there so you can directly send your data there and you can able to uh, train it over there okay so once you go inside uh, google collab you can create your own uh, uh, application there you can create your own python scripts there okay and uh, here the python scripts uh, you can have you can browse into different examples here so they have given very good examples here they have given intro to neural networks whatever the things we have discussed now na everything they could have given in their google collab uh, website itself so this is the program they have given by themselves they also used the same libraries which we have used okay matplotlib numpy pandas sklearn tensorflow these are the libraries which i have mentioned in the previous cases right so all these data uh, we are doing uh, it is being displayed here so this program is for calculating the housing data of the california okay so you can make use of this example also so this is available and before running this program don't forget to connect there is one option here na to connect so if you only do the connect then your data will be connected directly with your uh, online server your google server so after that what you can do you can do all your uh, training and uh, testing phases okay so this is what i wanted to